tell you a little bit about my story. I had lead poisoning. Uh, this was in the early 80s. I worked at a place where they had open lead solder pots and I didn't know the dangers. People have been working there 20 years. They were fine. Why me? Well, I, this was in Oregon. It was at an electronics place. Thank uh -huh. you. We're going to save these for the people that stepped out. So, oh, no sure. seconds. Um, yes, thank you. Yep. So it was an electronics company. We were building capacitors to put in um, computer screens in monitors. And they had to be sealed with lead to be able to hold a, an electrical charge. So I saw the fumes coming out. We called OSHA, the safety standards people, in. And they said they were working correctly. But I could see them coming out. So just because they were pulling at the right rate, they didn't think they needed to do anything about it. And I got poisoned. Well, I had headaches, earaches, sore throats as a child. And now what I know about it, especially headaches on the side, that's your liver. No problem. <laughs> So, um, headaches, on headaches on the side of your head here are indications of liver conditions usually. Yeah. So, I had a compromised immune system. I had horrible, horrible um, allergies. I couldn't go anywhere without holding a whole box of Kleenex with me all the time. And I couldn't go outside if anybody in the neighborhood was cutting their lawn, which is usually all the time. Windows had to be shut. Now I can go out and sniff a flower, put my nose right in there and just smell it and it's great and I can touch animals and you know, do all kinds of things. So my life was pretty limited before. So then I work at this place and I get poisoned and it was lead poisoning. So 47 doctors in the first year and nobody could really pinpoint what it was and they said, oh you have rheumatoid arthritis, no you have mono, um, you know, let's check your spinal fluid and just all kinds of crazy things. And finally, I found two doctors that said, I don't know. And so it empowered me to research things alone and find out. And they would try to give me different things to detoxify my liver. I had two great doctors. Of course, liver things are very bitter. And so I was always like, you better bring yourself another cup because I'm not taking that alone. <laughs> and they were great. They were homeopathic, so they don't harm your body if, you're, if you don't need them. So they were like, oh, God, you know. <laughs> but they worked with me, and that really empowered me. So it was after a while I started doing um, acupuncture and years later the acupuncturists were the ones that told me don't do raw food, it'll be too hard on your system. So this is where I really began to learn that each modality is beautiful in itself but it doesn't apply to what happens later on when you're shifting your diet. Um, they're not thinking food, they're thinking different medicines and tweaking all kinds of other stuff. But when I really got down to the food, it's the one thing that changed my life. So Chinese medicine works on if your body's wet or dry, hot or cold, and all these systems. But it did not apply to my body. Uh, Ayurvedic medicine too, the things it says I should eat don't apply to me. I get sick on some of those things. And the same thing with the blood type diet. O, people with O have to be um, protein eaters. And so, uh, and, I, and I believe they say meat, and there's plenty of other places for, for the proteins. And those things didn't agree with me, and they were causing toxic poisoning. So I was getting sicker and sicker because my body couldn't deal with it. So my heart, liver, and kidneys began to stop. They were very slow. I still work at not quite optimum levels, and I do pretty darn well. And so this is over 20 years ago, and I've been raw for 20 years. Still, it doesn't mean everything's going to be perfect. My thyroid blew out. My adrenals are a little shot because I've been working so hard. And I have to rebalance myself. I have to find that balance again. So just because you do raw foods or just you know, whatever it is, it's not the only thing that creates this body. And it's also our thoughts. It's a lot of stress and thoughts, which I know Paul talks about quite a bit. So um, finding what worked for me. So in the beginning, I couldn't have gotten healthy fast enough by just the food, and I began fasting. And I went one day. I went two or three days, five days, 10 days, 20 days, and my longest was 40 days. I began to like really fasting on water. Um, once I ate something or once I had the flavor, 
then I wanted to eat all the time. My dad owned a restaurant, so I was plenty used to eating. So for, to me, punishing myself was not eating. And then it became such a blessing to not eat. And yes, you have to work yourself up. I mean, this was over a couple of years of fasting and cleansing before I could do 40 days on water. And you hear angels sing. I didn't want to eat again. It was amazing. I mean, you just heard, oh, you know, and the sounds came on, the, the vision was so clear. It was just amazing. So that really jump-started what I needed because it would have taken so long for my body to get well, and I don't know if it would have, would have or how long it would have taken to really repair without that. So this is why I talked to you about fasting. Uh, a simple, easy fast can be done by just stopping eating at nighttime, which is perfect for the daylight diet, if he hasn't mentioned it already. I think you know him. And so um, by not eating at the end of the day and waiting till the next morning, breakfast, break fast, you know? So then if we can just go the rest of the day, and if you have something to look forward to at night, because a lot of people are okay first thing in the morning and then they get that craving going again if they know they have to wait another whole day. So if I stop around five o'clock, seven o'clock, and I don't eat again till the next day, then I've only really had 12 hours of waking time and it kind of tricks your body into, hey, you've just gotten 24 hours in. So that's a great way to begin. You sleep off half of it. And then you can um, you know, do weekends or do one day a week. There's groups around the world that fast one day a week and they say that doing that, and I forget over how much time, but it can, redo, it can take 20 years of bad health patterns off and you can regain all those years to your life. So very important to do that one day a week, let the digestive tract rest, let everything go. Let it do the repair work that it needs to instead of processing that food all the time.